so the Cayley movement we just saw. Um, in this movement, we saw successive generations kind of getting on with life. Um, the Gaeltach, the, the Gaelic speaking regions are renowned, of course, kind of goes without saying, and probably our audience would be well aware of this. Um, the Gaeltach are renowned for their oral culture, musical traditions. In this culture, among the Highlanders, the Cayley um, play, played and continues to play a very vital role in the perpetuation of the Gaelic art forms. So it's a gathering where stories, tales are told, uh, poems and ballads recited, proverbs quoted, songs sung, tunes played, dances danced. Um, and uh, that's one of the, the, the wonderful things growing up and spending a lot, I grew up in Halifax, but I spent a lot of time in the summer times in Cape Breton, especially after I was 16 or so working at the Gaelic College. Every night we had a Cayley. Mm -hmm and uh, there was music, lots of storytelling. So at the traditional <laughs> Inverness County, <laughs> Cayley, rum was the preferred okay. social lubricant. <laughs> uh, tea and coffee were also consumed in quantity. Now, none of those things would have been produced, you know, outside of Mabu. Um, so obviously they were imported. So I. I, I know that you've done some research, Carly, in, into the, the trade mm -hmm. that's going on. And yeah. I'd love to hear more about um, where the rum, the tea, and the coffee was coming from and what we were trading in return. Yeah, so um, uh, it's really interesting. When you start to look at what people were consuming, mm -hmm. you get a really good in a, a good introduction to what the global links were. So I've done, like you said, I've done some work on this uh, because there was a very uh, wonderful ledger that was found at the Chestico Museum and Archives and it's from 1819 and it talks about what people there um, were trading with a local merchant. So what they were bringing in and then what they were exchanging it for. And we see rum was a big deal. Like it, it, I was surprised at just how much rum people were <laughs> consuming. Um, and also wine. Oh. They were consuming rum and wine, uh, and they were also uh, getting coffee, um, molasses, tea, um, sometimes uh, different types of textiles. So mm -hmm. n none of that was really local. Um, and what I was interested in are the connections with the Caribbean. So oh. I was curious to see the extent to which the settlement um, uh, in, in Cape Breton specifically depended upon directly and indirectly the plantation slave economy in the Caribbean mm. because I wanted to know what the links were right. and they're very very clear yep. um, and but rum comes up molasses comes up um, coffee comes up and then what they're doing is is they're set they're sending down um, salt beef a lot of fish so you can see that they're using the land for agriculture so mm -hmm. butter fish um, beef, pork as well. Yeah. Those are the main things. Some root vegetables, uh, okay. they're also trading. So um, I always had the impression that our, our people and you know, most of the Highland settlers, it was subsistence farming that mm -hmm. they had. But, but in order to trade, of course, you have to have a surplus yeah. of uh, farmed goods, yeah. crops, um, fish, even livestock if they're trading. So, you know, at, at what point were these, the, the people who settled in the area going beyond sustaining themselves and having that surplus that they could trade? Well, this ledger is 1819, so that's wow. pretty early. very early. Yeah, okay. and it means that they have enough that they can't, they have a surplus that mm -hmm. they can trade for goods that would be considered luxuries. I mean, wine is a luxury, molasses mm -hmm. is something that we take for granted now every every kitchen in Cape Breton will have molasses, mm -hmm. but it was still a big thing and it was a trade item. Mm -hmm. um, but as people clear land, more land becomes available for crops and animals. Mm -hmm. And so we can kind of see that pattern evolving um, as, because it's, it's a lot to clear an acre of trees and rocks. Mm -hmm. And so as the years go by and the farms become bigger, um, there's more and more products. Hmm. Yeah. And tea. Tea is, is such an important staple um, in, in Cape Breton. Um, <laughs> now, t tea wasn't coming from 
the Caribbean. No, it's was, coming from the east. Yeah. Yes, and so those are through the trade networks, the British trade networks. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so British trade route ships were, were bringing tea. I know that, uh, yeah, I heard a podcast recently about tea culture in the northeastern U.S. in the 18th century. It was fascinating. Mm -hmm. So I have a, actually a little, uh, I come from a tea man myself. <laughs> I, I, my, my father, um, little story, not to get us too far off track, but in the late 1950s, before my dad was uh, married to my mom, um, he sold tea for the Red Rose Tea Company. Oh. And so he was a popular guy around uh, Cape Breton. And he tells a story. He, he passed away a couple of months ago. Um, I'm sorry. You know, thanks. Uh, but after living a very long, full, rich life. And, uh, but he used to tell us this story about the time when... Uh, the tea bag. Um, he was <laughs> responsible for bringing the tea bag to Inverness County, and he told the story of uh, one he would be working with small general stores, merchants, you know, Highland Scots, and he talks about this one time he he brought a shipment of red rose tea into this particular merchant and dropped it off to him, and it was in in tea bags, and uh, so. Several weeks later, he made a return visit to this particular merchant, and uh, the fellow was quite cross with him. <laughs> and so it is. What, what's is there an issue? So, well, yes, Alex. Le the last time you were here, you gave me the tea. Do you know how long it took to take scissors and cut <laughs> open each of those little bags of <laughs> tea? Oh, bless him! Oh my God! <laughs> right. Oh, my dad, the tea man. Did he lose a customer? No. Okay. I <laughs> I think he was able to explain what the tea bag was all about. Oh. And it was all good after that. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, so why don't we go into the, the fifth and okay. final movement, McKinnon's Brook Suite. Okay. This is called Migration. <laughs> 